the Super Tenere XTZ750. It's a pretty iconic bike. It won seven Dakars. It still looks great and the nostalgia is strong. So we got a new Tenere 700 to see how 30 years has changed things. Welcome to Retro vs Modern. There's this kind of intangible charm to 80s and 90s adventure bikes. This is the fourth episode we've done in this series. And from the moment I got on the Super Tenere, I had exactly the same feeling as I had when we rode the Africa Twin or the DR Big. They're soft and comfy, and they kind of chug along in this awkward, weird way. And they make me smile from the moment you get on them. They feel like they're way more capable than you expect them to be. First up, I think we need to address how damn good both of these bikes look. The old Super Tenere, the original version, is without a doubt one of the best looking adventure bikes of all time. I think it has stood the test of time really, really well, especially in the colorway, the white and red that we've got. This bike is a chap called Neil's family bike. It was his dad's bike when he was a kid. They did a lot of trips together on it, two up. And when his dad went to sell it, he decided that he didn't want to let him and he was going to restore it. And he's slowly been going through that process of putting it back together and making it look as good as he can afford to make it look. And he's put a few touches in there that I think are really classy. I love the headlight grill and a few other bits that aren't quite standard, but they really make it a great looking bike. Look how pretty it is. Oh, might be old, but damn, it looks good. I wonder if people thought it looked good in, uh, in 1990. My initial impression of the Super Tenere from the moment I rode it away from Neil's house down the road and turned left at the end was that it, it is small compared to a modern bike. And this is a bit of a running theme. I think when these bikes came out, everyone thought they were way too big. And if you've watched any of these episodes, I can't think I'm kind of starting to repeat myself a little bit. The Super Tenere feels like a small bike. The seat height is low. Everything is kind of much more cramped than it is on a modern bike. So the foot pegs are close to the seat. The foot pegs are close to the handlebars and it makes for a really small feeling bike. I, as a kind of quite tall person, feel huge on it. I can get my feet completely flat on the floor without any drama and the seat is really comfy. Those two themes carry throughout the whole bike without a doubt. It is incredibly comfort focused and I think that that has started to change a little bit as bikes have gotten newer. Off-road, that same idea of it being a bike that's kind of centered around comfort carries over massively. It's designed for a completely different style of riding to how I think the majority of us ride bikes today. Whereas in dirt bike world, not a huge amount has changed. With adventure bikes, it feels like everything has kind of gone full circle in a different direction. So with the Tenere, everything is kind of mushy. The controls are mushy and vague. The riding position, it just isn't really designed for standing up for control or for any dynamic movement in the same way that a modern bike is more capable of or more designed for. So you notice that the foot pegs and the handlebars are really close together vertically. It makes you stand super upright. And the Tenere is a huge amount happier with you riding it sat down than a more modern bike is. Because it's low and comfy and you can get your feet to the floor, it's kind of designed for what I like to call like farm style riding, where you just mash along like you're in an Austin Vince film. The suspension is exactly the same and I think it's really comparable to other adventure bikes of the same era. It's simple. Basically, it's just really simple suspension. It goes up and down. It has a degree of control. You end up just rolling over everything, kind of just bimbling along and it's super happy doing that. And if that's the kind of vibe you're going for, it would still make an awesome adventure bike, 
but you got to accept there's like a lot of limitations in there especially when you compare it to what we're looking for or what modern bikes are capable of. On the road, I kind of have that same vibe. This is massively a bike where I enjoyed riding it at a much more relaxed pace even though it's got a twin and it's a strong engine i was quite surprised i just didn't want to ride it fast like even on the really twisty open roads of the peak district i mostly just ambled along at 50 miles an hour and i kind of enjoy how when you ride bikes slower like that i think you get this with kind of scrambler orientated bikes as well how you exist more in the moment you think less about the riding and more about the scenery. It's a less absorbing riding process and a more absorbing experience as a whole. I pay more attention to other things and get less wrapped up in the adrenaline of the moment. And I think there's surprisingly something to be said for that ambling nature of an adventure bike. We've definitely, that's something that's definitely changed. It's only been around a couple of years now, but this Tenere 700, I think, is quickly working its way into becoming an iconic adventure bike. I genuinely think it's one of those bikes that in 25 years, we're going to look back on and go, that was an amazing motorbike. It changed a lot about what we expect adventure bikes to be. How awesome was it? And I bet they're going to be worth a ton of money if they're still around. A bit like that Super Tenere is now. Ever since it came out, the Tenere 700 has been one of my favorite adventure bikes. It does a huge amount of things right. It's really enjoyable to ride. It does still have some quirks, but overall it's a fantastic bike. It's a bike that I think also kind of bucked the trend a little bit of what an adventure bike should be in the modern era. A lot of adventure bikes in the last five years have gained tech and gained tech and gained tech, and they've got TFT displays and clever electronics. And for a lot of people, that's a pretty intimidating prospect. It's not something they particularly want. And Yamaha went the complete other way. They've kept this bike as manual as you can keep a bike inside the current Euro regulation. It's got a cable clutch. It's got a cable throttle. It does what it says on the tin. It's not trying to do anything fancy. Apart from the ABS, which to be honest, might as well not be there. That's a bit substandard. But if you turn it off, you're back to standard. And it's really easy to do that. There's a lot of lack of friction about this bike when you ride it. For me, one of the first things you notice on this this Tenere is that it feels super modern on the road, around off-road, in the car park. Everything about it is really, really up to date. It's stiffer, it's more purposeful, you're quite on top of it. The seat is stiff, the way it handles is really light in your hands and all the controls feel really light in your hands. The clutch is feather light, the brakes are sharp, the throttle response is instant. And the way the engine delivers its power is really free feeling. It's, it's a really modern, really good adventure bike. And there's a reason that it's had such good reviews. It's because of all of those things. When it comes to the Tenere 700, it makes me super excited straight away. It's so peppy and enjoyable and there's this kind of liveliness and lightness to it and the way it rides that I fundamentally think is a really good characteristic. It's in that way the complete opposite in where the enjoyment comes from to the old bike. The old bike has this charm of being chuggy and being way more capable than you expect it to, but it doesn't have a high performance ceiling. It's not exciting you. It's just giving you a kind of, it just gives you a dump load of feedback when you ride it that catches you in a different way to a modern bike. On the older bike as well, I find you use the gearbox a ton more. I'm always up and down the gears. The, the usability of the power is much narrower. Whereas on the modern Tenere 700, you have the opposite. You can be in whatever gear you want. You can run it right down to low RPM in a really high gear, 
or you can rev it to the moon and you can hold gears for a really long time. The engine is capable of both ends of the spectrum of behaving how you want it to behave. Whereas the older bike is kind of, kind of boxes you into a corner with how you've got to ride it. Just stopped in a lovely place because the Tenere doesn't sound like it's great. So we're just going to check some of the basic things, make sure that it's got oil, water, etc. And then uh, I'm going to go to the pub. I spotted Hewitt in his natural Instagram attack. Unfortunately, as we were finishing up day one of our ride, the Super Tenere started to make a knocking noise in the engine. Immediately, Psy P pulled over and we started trying to figure out what the problem was. We spent a bunch of time doing that. And in the end, we decided that it's a family heirloom. So we towed it 25 miles back to the campsite and took another look the next morning. After a couple of hours of trying to decipher the problem, Honestly, we didn't really know what it was. It sounded like the big ends were starting to go. And so we decided to call the test there. Because of this, I'm not really sure if the performance we got out of the Super Tenere is as true to life as it could have been. I'm gonna hold reservation on any judgment that we have of that bike in that department. I don't really think it feels fair. I'd love to hear in the comments if you've got any more experience of what a Super Tenere feels like to ride because it might give some good context to this test as well. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I wanna say a massive thanks to everyone that makes these videos possible, from the people that came out to help me make it, to the sponsors of this video and our Patreon members. All of you make a massive difference to keeping producing these videos. The sponsors for this video were Barkbusters and Revit. Barkbusters make great handguards. If you wanna check out what they do for your bike, there's a link in the description below. And Revit makes some of the best adventure gear you can buy. And otherwise, remember, Life's better when you're riding.